The story of Melbourne, as we know it today, is just the most recent chapter in the story of the Boorong. What we today call the Yarra River brings life to our region and has been doing so for countless generations. For tens of thousands of years prior to the arrival of European colonists, the people of the Boonwurrung and Woiwurrung tribes of the indigenous Kulin Nation lived as hunter-gatherers in harmony with a pristine river system. In 1835, it was the Yarra River that led explorers into the heart of what would one day become one of the world's great cities. Since then, the river has served as Melbourne's life support system and has evolved alongside the city, with each asserting its influence on what the other has today become. The river we see today flowing through the heart of Melbourne would be near unrecognisable to those early explorers. It was they who built Melbourne's first colonial dwellings along the river's northern banks, and since then, the lower reach of the river has undergone dramatic change. If we take a look at the city of Melbourne, just 30 years after its foundation, we see a very different Yarra River, along with an extensive system of inland lakes and swampland. This was the Yarra system much closer to its natural state. If we transition from the river of 1864 to the river of today, it's clear to see the impact we've had. The lakes and swamps have made way for some of Melbourne's most valuable property, and the flow of the river has been cut by half as a thirsty city takes what it needs. Over the years, the Yarra has been re-engineered to better suit the needs of Melbourne's people. Sections of the river have been straightened and widened, diversion tunnels have been blasted through the hillside, shipping channels have been dredged, and the upper reach has been dammed for drinking water storage and to alleviate seasonal flooding. Today, Melbourne's dependence on the Yarra River is as strong as ever. It sustains agriculture, hosts a multitude of festivals, sporting events and celebrations throughout the year, and serves as Australia's busiest container shipping port. But most importantly, the Yarra provides Melbournians a standard of drinking water the envy of many a city. Melbourne's entire water catchment area is made up of five separate systems. The Western Port, Werribee, Dandenong, Maribyrnong, and Melbourne's most vital catchment, the Yarra. This catchment covers an area of just over 4,000 square kilometres. The river begins its journey near the lower slopes of Mount Borbor and travels 242 kilometres. Throughout the system, the river is fed by 24 major tributaries. The upper Yarra system is mountainous and covered in a thick forest of giant mountain ash trees. This is by far the most vital piece of Melbourne's entire catchment, collecting 70% of all drinking water consumed by the city. In its heart is the Upper Yarra Reservoir, built in 1957. At full capacity, this lake holds 200,000 megalitres, but that only accounts for just over 11% of Melbourne's total storage. At this stage of the catchment, the water is clear, with a tea coloration caused by tannins released from the forest vegetation. Human impact is minimal and water quality high. The Middle Yarra system spans large river floodplains, now mostly devoted to agriculture, predominantly cattle farms, but also orchards, vegetable fields, and of course, the famous Yarra Valley vineyards. It is this section of the river's journey where it takes on microscopic clay particles, which give the Yarra its famously brown colour. The lower Yarra system enters the residential, commercial and industrial suburbs of Greater Melbourne. The river system passes through increasing urbanisation and on into the heart of the city, finally emptying into Port Phillip Bay. If we return to the uppermost reach of the Yarra's catchment, we find the Yarra Ranges National Park. In 1891, in what many believe to be an inspired act of foresight, well ahead of its time, 
the Victorian government set aside 157,000 acres of forest in the Yarra Ranges with the express purpose of capturing, filtering and storing drinking water. Much of this area was closed to the public and to this day remains largely untouched. It is still possible, however, to visit parts of this region and a drive through the Yarra Ranges will not disappoint. Today, Melbourne is one of only five cities worldwide with fully protected drinking water catchments. However, not all decisions made in respect to the health of the Yarra system have been so inspired. Throughout the booms of the gold rush and industrial revolution, Melbourne's new industries set up shop along the banks of the Yarra and many of its tributaries. The river provided them with a convenient method of disposing of toxic chemicals, as well as oils, grease and other pollutants. The river mouth was also dredged, which created an effective trap for these pollutants, and in particular, heavy metals, which are still present in high concentrations in the lower reach of the river. While environmental regulations over the years have been strengthened, and significant efforts have been made to improve the health of the system, there is still much we can improve on. In September 2017, a landmark piece of legislation was passed by the Victorian Parliament with the clear purpose of long-term protection of the Yarra system. The Yarra River Protection Wilipgin Birurung Muron Act is groundbreaking in that it declares the Yarra River as one living and integrated natural entity which carries with it certain legal rights allowing advocates to represent the river in a court of law. The Act also seeks to give more political voice to the land's traditional owners and recognise the intrinsic connection they have to the river. Wurundjeri elders were heavily involved in drafting the legislation and invited to address Parliament in support of the Act. The state now recognises something that we, as the First People, have always known, that the Birurung is one integrated living entity. Birurung wa napu willem A spirit, a part of our dreaming. We have lived with and known the Burong ever since the beginning. This bill is the first to pass Victorian Parliament, which contains language from Indigenous Australians. Alongside government, various community groups and organisations are forming across Melbourne, with an intent to not only protect the river, but to rehabilitate. We're friends of the Yarra Valley Parks and uh, we're a volunteer group and we're enthusiasts for protecting and enhancing the beauty of this part of the Middle Yarra. Specifically, we've been working on this area here called Yaruk Tambour, named by Doreen Garvey Wandon of the Wurundjeri. We've recreated a historic wetland here. We moved 3,000 tonnes of soil to do this. A few minutes ago, we were overflown by Wedgetail Eagle. We have kangaroos and wallabies here as well. We're passionate about preserving what's here, the beauty of what's here, and recovering it from a lot of the degradation that occurred with European settlement and the consequences of that. In fact, people would be amazed that this tree behind me is a thousand years old. And if you imagine it, that this was 750 years old when Captain Cook arrived. As our understanding of how the Yarra River and its catchment functions, so too does our awareness of its importance on our everyday lives. But not just our own. The Yarra is home to a large variety of wildlife. It not only provides habitat for some of the world's most remarkable animals, but also several critically endangered species found nowhere else in the world, including the leadbeater's possum and helmeted honeyeater. Study in resident animals can provide a strong indication as to the overall health of an ecosystem. And to best protect the Yarra system, we need to do all we can to understand it. A host of scientific studies and surveys are currently being conducted by universities, government and non-profit organisations right across Melbourne. One such organisation you may spot patrolling the river is the Yarra River Keeper, who are heavily involved in scientific studies of the river system, as well as educational, and clean-up programs. The Yarra Riverkeeper Association was founded in 2004 by a group of like-minded community members who recognised the importance of the Yarra River 
We're primarily involved with advocacy, education, and on-ground works like cleaning and revegetation programs. We're in the Yarra today running a microplastic trawl. With the Mantanet trawls, we conduct them in the Yarra and the Maribyrnong uh, once a month. Uh, for half an hour, we trawl upstream. We travel at 1,000 revs, so we keep a standard engine speed. And the uh, microplastics end up in this cod end sock here. The trawl samples are actually analysed by eye, by volunteers. We've estimated over the study period that the two rivers are contributing 828 million items per year to the bay. And that's just from the top 20 centimetres of the rivers, which is what the net actually captures. 74% of those were microplastics, so that's quite an astounding amount of plastic that's getting into the bay and potentially impacting on wildlife and our food chain. Volunteers are integral to the work that we do and they're mostly involved in the field, helping us run our bi-monthly cleanups along the river. One of the programs we're currently working on is the Yarra River Reed Blitz. This involves attaching a massive vacuum system to the back of a boat and sucking up as much polystyrene from reed beds as possible. Reed beds act as a trap for litter and they do an excellent job of preventing litter from making its way into waterways and into the bay. But these reed beds need to be cleaned as well. So this vacuum system is going to remove tons and tons of polystyrene beads which are really difficult to reach. The Commissioner for Environmental Sustainability has been tasked by the Victorian Government to support these research programs and provide independent and objective reporting on the state of the environment. Custodianship of Melbourne's most valuable natural resource is a collaboration between scientists and researchers, policy makers, volunteers and everyday Melburnians. Throughout its history, Melbourne has been a city of great change. Its future holds the challenges of climate change and a growing population, yet also the prospect of clean energy and a reconnection of the built environment with the natural. The Commissioner's first report on the state of the Yarra and its parklands will be released to the public. Decisions we all make today will directly shape the future of our city for generations to come. It's a future that is in our hands, and one we can all look forward to.